Hello everyone, I'm Ben and we're going to go through a very improper way to learn Houdini. Okay, let's do it. So if you're new to Houdini, this is your viewport and you see your things there. This is where we create nodes and these nodes have properties that we adjust up here in our parameters tab. And then we see the results of all that work over here on our viewport or in our renders. Okay, now let's create something. So in my create tab, I'm just going to choose a box click it down. There's a box here. You can see it created a node and this node has a bunch of parameters that we can adjust. That's cool. And just be aware if you um, don't have Redshift, you won't have this Redshift. So just ignore that. Uh, next thing we want to have another, we want to get some more geometry. Let's get a sphere. Hey, there we go. We've got two objects in our scene. Cool. And we can see them both and let's just rotate around them. So I'm going to hold the alt key and click that left mouse button and orbit around. Oh yeah, just like that. Now, once I want to go and zoom in, I'm going to hold the Alt key and click the right mouse button. Yeah, that's a good edge. It's a really nice edge, really sharp. Okay, very good. Last thing I'll do is go and hold the Alt key and click the middle mouse button or the scroll wheel as you're probably familiar with it being. Okay. Now, some of you should be able to mouse wheel in as well, I think, because I've got these super gumbo um, key uh, depressions going. It's not letting me scroll in and out with my mouse wheel, but hopefully you're having a bit more luck. Okay, so we've got two nodes here um, and they're in our object context. You can see we have these different contexts. So if we're ever looking to create geometry, we're basically going to be in this object context. Okay, we might use something like matte if we want to create materials and out if we want to render things out. So let's just stay in our OBJ context, right? Object context. And let's blow away these nodes. Select them, press delete. Goodbye. Next thing we'd like to do is to actually create a terrain. So I'm going to, with my cursor over here, in this node view. I'm going to press tab to bring up our tab menu where we create all of our nodes. And then I'm going to say, hey, create a terrain. Well, it's not called a terrain. We're calling it a height field. And you can see after just typing HE, Houdini already knows, hey, is this what you're after? That's exactly what I'm after. I'll click that, choose that. I cannot see what this is. This is just taking all my viewports. So I'll press space and G and that'll frame up to the selection. Hey, cool, I can see the extents of my, ah, that's completely not a terrain. Well, what we need to do is jump inside this height field and edit it so it looks more like a terrain and less like a flat plane. So I'm gonna either press the I key to go inside it or I'm gonna double click it. Once I've double clicked it, I have this height field node and this has one output and it also has some parameters that I can adjust if I wanna change those initial parameters, but I'm really interested in just getting a terrain. So I'm gonna click and drag out from this output and now it's prompting me, what do I want to create? Well, I'd like to press tab and choose a node. So I'm going to press HE again. And you can see that Houdini now has provided access to me because I'm inside of the height field node. There's all these cool height field nodes that I can add to my height field. Oh, let's choose what we want wisely. I'm going to choose a height field noise. Okay. And with that, we get a height field noise. Now, if this doesn't, doesn't pop up um, or isn't connected here, right? You can cut the wires by holding the Y key and you get the little scissors and cut across. And you can see here that there's this little red triangle saying, hey, you need to connect this input. So that's why I'm clicking and dragging down like so. Okay. Another thing, the fun way to disconnect nodes is to grab one and just shake it really violently. Okay. And we can just click and drag that one down to the required input. Great. So we have that, but there's no noise. Why is there no noise? Well, in Houdini, we're going to evaluate this node graph from top to bottom. And you can see right now, we're only looking at this blue one, right? This blue means this is our display flag. That means, hey, Houdini, show this node. And that's all there is there. So we want to grab the noise and say, hey, show the noise by clicking this little blue flag here. So now we're seeing the height field with the noise applied to it. It still doesn't look like a terrain. So we need to, well, apply some erosion. So what about if we click and drag out of this next output node and type tab, and HE, and we say that we want some erosion. All right, I'm gonna choose height field erode. That's all connected up. Move my display flag down to the erode, and there's still no erosion, but we do have this pretty psychedelic color here going on. So I'm just going to say, hey, let's um, change this coloring a little bit, because I don't know what's going on here. Now, so I'm going to move over to this visualization tab in our height field or road node. 
And you can see that it's going from a minor elevation of zero, which is if we orbit down, we can see about where this grid line is. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and hide that. Pardon me. And then it's going up to 250 units. And if this green one here is maybe 50 units up, this white one here is probably way up in the sky. So I don't want to have that. I just want to have Houdini compute the range. Ah, that's better. Good. With the compute range all set up, I'm just going to go ahead and say, I want this erosion to kick in now. Where's the erode button? There is no erode button. We simply go over to our play and that is our erode button. So I'm going to click play and just watch the magic unfold. Would you look at that erosion? Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. That's just what I want. Okay, cool. So I, I don't have to let that go too far. Maybe 20 frames. That's looking pretty good to me already. All right. I'm happy with that erosion. I got some cool debris here. I got some water that's formed and pulled up. Some nice erosion. Give me these sharp peaks. That is looking very much like a terrain to me. Okay, now these, these colors are uh, pretty fantastic. I'm going to change them a little bit more to my liking. So I'm going to go and say, hey, down near the water, I want to have something that's kind of green and blue and uh, like it's been getting plenty of water. And so there's lots of lush foliage down there. Yeah, that's good. And then as it goes up, eh, maybe it's not quite so, a little bit, a little bit kind of more yellow, a little bit less saturated, maybe a little darker. Uh, no, nah, it's got to be, it's got to be bluer. Yeah, that just looks so good. Hey, speaking of bluer, we can actually change the color of the water here because this is too blue. And this is a layer unto itself here in our, our height field system. So we can go down here and we can click on these little drop downs and we can see the layers that are available to us. And so first of all, this water here, this was already set up here. So I'm going to go and just change the color of the water and say, uh, yeah, that looks really nice. I'd go swimming in that any day. So with that in place, I just have to say what I want to do the tops of the mountains as. Well, I'll adjust this color and say, you should be a very cool salmon color because mm, salmon is delicious. And uh, that's that's great. We've got a, a beautiful terrain, right? And just try not to uh, see the buttons over here. <laughs> okay. Now, the one thing missing is um, there's no clouds. So how do we do that? Well, what about if we go back up to our object menu? Okay, we're in our object context, top level. And we can come over to the clouds tab, right? And I'm just going to deselect my height field by clicking off it and go and choose sky rig. And you can see down the bottom, it says select bounding box geometry and press enter. I don't want any bounding box geometry, so I'm just going to press enter. And what's happened? I've jumped inside the sky rig node. So I'm no longer in that top OBJ level. So I'm just going to, while I'm in here, press U on the keyboard. And now I'm back to seeing my sky rig and my height field, but I can't see my sky rig. Now if I select it and press space G, Oops, with my cursor over the viewport. There it is. It's very, very small. So that's no good. What I need to do is, with my Skyrig selected, change it so it's 1,000 times what it currently is. Now I get some rolling fog in the hills. Still not what I want. But I am just going to click and drag it up, right? You've got your, your move, rotate, and scale tools here if you find that you don't have this gizmo up. And that's looking pretty cool now, except this is just all white, this, this cloud. So I'm going to come up to my lights here, lights and cameras, and choose a distant light. Click that once. Now I just click it into the scene. We get this Mordor, this very over, this melodramatic lighting scenario. And I'm just going to go and click on one of these rotating axes. Oh, why are you not letting me? All right. Click on one of these rotating axes and get the look that I like. All right, that's uh, that's looking pretty cheery. And so if I click off the distant light, I can just come in here now and get all my all my cinematic goodness. Take a look around the world. Yeah, that's looking real nice. Okay, and that's how we make a terrain in Houdini. And if you have any questions, yeah, pop them in the comments below. And I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.